Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to Imprint Knowledge Solutions. So uh, today is the start of a new series, and uh, what we're going to do in this series is we're going to try to do Indian culture and Indian history. And uh, in that, uh, what our basic references are going to be, obviously, in this part that is Indian visual art, which is we starting today, is going to be the NCRT and the CCRT resources, plus uh, references like Upinder Singh, etc. Right, and we would be obviously quoting them as we go across, right? And uh, I think uh, this would be a very interesting series. I think uh, a lot of you might not have started this way, so I think uh, uh, this is one opportunity for all of you to uh, look at Indian art a little differently, uh, to appreciate it rather than try to just rote learn it. Okay, so let's try to start this uh, series now. Okay, so. Uh, we're going to start with the, the wall paintings of India. And uh, now, you know, you can actually see a few images that we have actually chosen for you. So this is uh, what, you know, you will actually find in various parts of India uh, in uh, rock shelters. Now, interestingly, uh, the, among Indians, the love of color, the love of design is deeply ingrained. Um, every region of India has its own folk art, right? So. Painting basically uh, is one of the most delicate forms of art. Uh, obviously, there are others as well, sculpture, etc. We'll cover that in a different video. So, painting is one of the most you know delicate forms of Indian art, and it gives expression uh, to human thought and feelings. And it's basically a way of line and medium. So, basically, the idea is that you're drawing as well as coloring. Now, uh, remember, you know many thousands of years before uh, even the dawn of history as, as we know uh, india uh, uh, you know you know in india we had a man you know as a cave dweller and what he did was he painted his rock shelters to satisfy his aesthetic uh, sensitivity and creative urge and uh, as we talked previously right that indians love color right we play holy etc so uh, we love to create paintings like um, you know if you even meet a small child you know he would show such interest in painting every day uh, which will not be in anything else right and so the idea is that uh, we have paintings from you know those times when we have no history so these paintings actually speak to us in some ways Okay, so uh, that is what basically our focus is going to be, trying to understand how the human uh, being of that era thought, uh, lived, and enjoyed. Now, uh, where are these paintings, right? So the earliest example of uh, paint, Indian paintings are on the caves of the Kemu range of the central India and Vindhya Hills and some places of Uttar Pradesh. So there was a very interesting story about this, right? So what happened was that... Um, V. S. Burkankar, right, in 1957, noticed the Bimbitka cave while he was actually traveling, uh, you know, uh, through a train from Bhopal to Itarsi. He basically got off at the nearest railway station and uh, he started to explore. And that is how we got Bimbitka. Uh, before that, A. C. L. Uh, Carlyle, uh, Carlyle uh, was an assistant surveyor, right, uh, in uh, the ASI and in 1867 basically he uh, looked into Mirzapur district in Sohagipur right and more than 150 Mesolithic sites were also found then so the idea is that you know if you think about India right uh, it is much more uh, you know you know going back than the discovery of the Altamira in Spain, which are the most famous rock paintings in the world. So Cockburn, Anderson, Mitra, Ghosh were the earliest uh, archaeologists who discovered a large number of sites in Indian subcontinent. So the paintings, how are they, what are they about? So paintings are of primitive records of wild animals, war possessions, and hunting scenes. They are crude, but they're very realistic. And all these obviously have a resemblance to the famous rock painting in Spain, uh, which is supposed to be the work of a Neolithic man. So look at this beautiful painting, right? Um, you know, I would say that when I look at it, you know, I, you know, you think about the fact that what that person thought at that time is something I think everybody uh, should appreciate. Now, what are the locations of these paintings? So, uh, now remember, remnants of these paintings have been found in Madhya Pradesh, Ut Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, and Bihar. And some of them also have been noticed in, uh, you know, Uttarakhand, Kumayu region as well. The most famous ones, obviously, uh, are the river uh, Soyal at 
Lakhudiar, right? And this is about 20 kilometers of, on the Almora um, Berachna road. And it basically, Lakhudiar basically means one lakh caves. So this is the most famous one. So obviously Mirzapur is, as, as I talked about, very, very famous. Uh, there have been, uh, you know, other places as well, Iduki, right? In Kerala, we have, uh, you know, places there as well. So, you know, it's obviously this region here, Panchmadi region, Raigar region, right? Belari region. We have all these places. We have areas uh, with paintings, area with engravings and paintings, right? So I would say that uh, if you think about it, um, you know, from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, we have, uh, you know, paintings. But interestingly, in India, uh, you know, in comparison to places in Europe, uh, you know, the these paintings are at places that are well lit. So it looked as if people were inhabiting them even after, right? I would say, uh, you know, uh, the, in the Neolithic or the Mesolithic man died, right? So, uh, what are the content of these paintings? Now, content uh, basically is divided into three categories. There was man, there's animal, and there's geometric patterns. And there's in some white, black, and red okra, right? So, these are the ones, right? Handling uh, dancing figures are Lakhudiyar, baby lines are Lakhudiyar, right? Look at these, you know, right? Abstract paintings, I would say. So, uh, the humans are represented in stick like forms a uh, large snouted animal, a fox, uh, uh, multi legged lizards are the main animal motifs. Uh, there are wavy lines, as we see here. There's rectangular uh, filled geometric designs. We'll show you those. Uh, there's a group of dots which can be seen. Uh, one of the most interesting scenes depicted here is of the hand link dancing human figures, and that's really amazing. Uh, there are simple, you know, uh, superimposition of paintings as well, uh, right? There's, you know, you know, people have been painting over their earlier paintings as well. So those kind of things also are happening. Uh, the earliest one are in black. Over them, they are red ochre paintings and the last groups are in white. So what we have to understand is, uh, you know, from Kashmir to Karnataka to Andhra, uh, we have paintings. We have engravings, right? From Kashmir, there's two slabs in engravings which have been reported. Granite rocks of Karnataka, Andhra have provided suitable canvases to the Neolithic man for his paintings as well, right? And uh, several sites are there, but they're obviously Kupgalu, Piklihal, and Tekalokota. Teka These are the famous ones. Now, uh, the idea is uh, what type of paintings are there? So paintings in white, paintings in red ochre over a white background and paintings in red ochre. And uh, these paintings belong to the late uh, historical, early historical and neolithic you know, paint periods. So we, have, we are making basically what, you know, if you think about what would a, uh, you know, a man at that time uh, paint. So he would paint nature as it is. So, you know, what he sees, what he's most frightened of, what he really cares about, what he thinks, right? He, so he thinks about the bull, the elephant, the samba, the gazelle, uh, the sheep, the goat, the horses, right? Stylized uh, humans, tridents, and even vegetal motifs, right? So stuff like that. Uh, now, you know, let's look at one uh, place, which is uh, maybe the richest paintings, right, in India. Uh, so, you know, the Bimbetka caves, right? And uh, these hills ranges are full of uh, Paleolithic and Mesolithic remains. Uh, they're full of forest. Uh, this was a perfect place for Stone Age people to live because it was full of forest. There was wild plants, there was fruit available, there is streams, there are creeks. And uh, in that, uh, you know, uh, Bimbetka, basically gave them a uh, amazing place to stay so as i talked about that you know how bimbetka was discovered through a train journey by vs vikankar and uh, vikankar spent uh, you know survey, you know several years serving in these inaccessible hills and jungles to study these so what are the themes of these paintings so the themes of the paintings are of great variety uh, you know the, the paintings of mundane events of early life daily life to sacred and royal images. They include uh, hunting, dancing, music, horse, elephant riders, um, you have animal fighting, there's honey collections, uh, there's decoration of bodies, there is household scenes and so on, right? So Bibetka obviously, um, remember, uh, because there are a lot of uh, you know people who have been living across times. So there is a uh, Papalithic, there's Mesolithic, right? There's a Chalcolithic period as well there. Okay, so seven historical periods are, you know, you can actually see paintings from those. Uh, 
So look at this, uh, right? So this is uh, what a Mesolithic painting, uh, right? So this is the hunting scene. You can really look at, you know, this person you know, holding a bow and arrow, right? And uh, the, you can actually see this person maybe dancing. This person has a spear, right? Then there's a hunting scene here as well, a full-fledged hunting scene. So you can see, you know, a deer being hit by an arrow, right? And so on, right? So uh, beautiful uh, paintings, I would say. Um, so... What about Bimbetka in the Upper Paleolithic period? So let's look, study that a little. So look at this. These are the paintings that, you know, original photographs. Uh, so the paintings of the Upper Paleolithic phase are linear representations. Uh, so they're in green and dark red of huge animals such as bisons, elephants, tiger, rhinos, boars, and besides stick-like human figures. So human beings are stick-like and obviously animals are made you know, bigger. Uh, so few are wash paintings, but most of them are filled with geometric patterns. Uh, the green paintings are of dancers and red one of hunters. So let me, uh, right, if you look into that. So look at this. So, you know, this is how a polychrome boar has been made, a bimbit can green, then there's a bull at Jora, right? And then there is this uh, dancers at Lakhyardior, right? Oh, and the painting of boar and bimbit guys there as well. So what about the Mesolithic period? So the largest number of paintings belong to period two, and that covers the Mesolithic paintings in Bimbetka. So in this, the hunting scenes are predominant. The hunting scenes, the big people in the hunting in groups, right? So I could show them in Lokhidiyar as well. Uh, armed with barbed spears, pointed sticks, uh, arrows, bows. In some paintings, these primitive men are shown with traps, snares, probably to catch animals. The hunters are shown wearing simple clothes and ornaments, right? And and sometimes, uh, you know, obviously elaborate headgear is also used by these people. They, some people are even have masks in the Mesolithic period. Uh, so, but at the end of the day, it is the animal, which, uh, you know, from birds to squirrels to rhinos to panthers to leopards to antelopes, you know, the Mesolithic artist, uh, you know, they loved to paint animals. And in these pictures, you know, sometimes animals is chasing uh, people, men, that is, and in others, uh, they are chased and hunted by men. And some of uh, these paintings especially show a fear of animals by men, man, and many others show a sense of tenderness and love for them as well. Uh, there are also a few engravings uh, representing mainly animals. Uh, so animals are painted in a naturalistic style, but, you know, humans uh, were depicted only in a stylistic manner. Uh, women are painted both in the nude and clothed. Uh, the young and the old equally find place in these paintings. There's children are painting running, jumping, playing. There is community dances. So if you think about it, you know, uh, I would say that uh, in these paintings, we could actually see uh, what people at that time did and what they thought of, uh, what uh, did they think of nature and so on. So there are paintings of women gathering fruit and honey from trees, of women and grinding and preparing food, of uh, some of men, women, uh, children, obviously they tend to depict some kind of family. Uh, maybe if, you know, maybe a family did exist at that time, we still don't know. Uh, many, uh, in many of the rock shelters, we find hand prints, fish prints and dots uh, made by fingerprints as well. So look at this, right? So this is the, uh, you know, painting, and you know, people are holding hands. And then there's the hunting scene as well. So we already talked about the polychrome bear from Bimbet Katabul from Jora and the dancers, right? From so this is dancers, right? Uh, is there? Then uh, what about the Chalcolithic period? So uh, here the paintings of this period reveal association, right? So this is important. They, it basically shows contact, mutual exchange of requirements of the cave dwellers, right? Uh, with area with settled agriculture communities of the Malwa Plains. And many times, uh, chalcolithic ceramics, rock paintings bear common motifs, such as a cross hat square and lattice. Uh, pottery, metal tools are also shown, but in the vividness and vitality of the earlier periods disappear from these paintings. So, you know, the, maybe the person uh, now, you know, thinks, uh, you know, what she was excited about, right? So it's like, you know, a small child who really loved painting when he was younger, uh, doesn't anymore. Well, so the question comes, what are the various materials? How, you know, you know, we now, these days we go to a shop and buy paints. What did we do there? So the artists of Bimbetka uh, used many colors, including various shades of white, yellow, orange, red, ochre, purple, brown, green, and black. Uh, but, you know, 
white, red uh, were the favorite colors. Uh, the paints were made by grinding various rocks, uh, minerals. Uh, they got red from hematite, and which is known as Garu in India. Green from, uh, you know, basically from a stone called Chalcodin. This is important. Uh, this can be asked, uh, right, as a statement in prelims. So uh, white uh, might have been made of limestone, uh, right, rock. Of mineral was first grounded into powder, and this may have been mixed with water or some thick, sticky substance such as animal fat or gum or resins from trees. Uh, brushes were made out of plant fiber, right? So what is very very amazing about these paintings uh, is also the materials, you know, the ingenuity, the invention, the discover, the discovery, the, you know, the curiosity, the innovation of the Mesolithic man, right? But what is amazing is this, these colors survived thousands of years of adverse weather conditions. And it is believed that the colors have remained intact because of the chemical reaction of the oxide present on the surfaces of the rocks. Uh, look at this painting, I would say, right? Uh, so look at these animal paintings from Katotia, Lakhajoa, right? And um, you know, look at this painting of feeding a pig and preparing food at, at Kathotia, right? So amazing, I would say, this uh, how these things have been depicted in a very rough way, I would say, but still you can see this person is trying to feed this pig here. Uh, so the artists uh, here, you know, have made their paintings on the wall and ceilings of rock shelters. And some of the paintings are reported from the shelters, some of them are made in places uh, which uh, do not seem to have living places. Uh, some places, obviously, you know, you might think even have religious importance. Uh, you know, if you think about beautiful paintings on uh, the rock shelters close to the ceilings, you normally wonder why would somebody paint the ceiling uh, and, uh, you know, close, chose to paint at such an uncomfortable position. So the paintings, uh, you know, obviously was perhaps for people to notice them from a distance and for maybe beautification purposes. Uh, so the painting, though, from the uh, remote past, if you think about them, right, uh, if you look at from the aesthetic sense of things, right, so, you know, if you look at them, you say that uh, they do not lack pictorial quality, uh, despite various limitations such as acute working conditions, uh, acute, you know, there's inadequate tools, materials. Uh, there is a charm of simple rendering of scenes uh, of the artists in which uh, they, you know, they basically showed um, the men rejoicing, you know, they showed them appearing, uh, you know, full of youth, you know. Uh, the animals, basically, if you think about them, uh, are shown more majestic and youthful than they perhaps were. Uh, it, it tells you that something, you know, that the you know humans of that time really adored uh, animal life. So the primitive artist, uh, right, uh, seemed to possess an uh, intrinsic passion for storytelling. And these pictures depict in a dramatical way the animals and men are engaged for survival. Right. So in one of those uh, you know, groups of people have been showing hunting a bison in the process, some injured men are lying uh, scattered on the grounds uh, in some, you know, uh, animal is shown in the agony of death and men are depicting dancing and these kind of paintings give a man a sense of power over these animals he would meet in the open which was very necessary at that time remember that uh, at that time you know um, facing a lion or facing a tiger would have been very very difficult and very very dangerous so look at this this is a fishing scene right at uh, lakha Johar, right so this is you know fishing you know all these people are fishing with nets right this is a family scene right people are sitting and having food it seems right uh then uh, i think one of the most perhaps the most interesting one this abstract painting uh joara right and so look at this uh so this seems as if these this is some you know swamp and this this is something you know some kind of uh, rocks things below so it may be showing the various kind of sediments which are there different types of soils um right uh it's totally abstract, I would say. Then a pair of hunters, if you look at that, at Bimbetka, then a hunter, uh, you know, with a basket net filled with animals, right, uh, tells you that, you know, at that time, uh, a man used to hunt so many different type of animals. So the question is what stories they tell, right? Uh, because, you know, if you look at one person, right, uh, to another, uh, I think all of you might have a different viewpoint on how they, you know, they were. So uh, these historic uh, paintings help us understand uh, early human beings, their lifestyle, their food habits, their daily activities, and above all, they help us understand their mind, the way they thought. Uh, Prehistoric paintings remain a great witness to the evolution of human civilization uh, through the numerous rock weapons, uh, tools, ceramics, and bones. More than anything else, you know, if you think about it, the greatest wealth 
uh, uh, you know, of the primitive human being uh, are these paintings. And uh, that is the only way we can think of uh, listing them. Remember, we have, you know, we make videos, we have Instagram, we have Facebook, all those things, right? So, you know, anything we do as you know, can be seen across time, I would say. But this was not the case. And these paintings is maybe the Instagram of that generation. Uh, so this is the hunting scene. I'll leave you with this, right? Uh, the hunting scene engraved on stone by Burza home, right? And this is the man, right, trying to kill a deer. Uh, so that's there. Uh, so um, with that, we end and we look at a question which uh, came in UPSC, right? Uh, this is in Maine's uh, 2015, right? Uh, so the so question was, Methodistic rock art architecture of India not only reflects the cultural life of the times, but also aesthetic sense comparable to modern Indian painting, critically evaluate. So uh, this answer was written by you know, one of our students, but pretty decent, I would say. Mesolithic, so what the way the person answers, so Mesolithic is the age that after Mesolithic age and before, right? Pal right. Uh, so after Paleolithic and before Mesol Neolithic. Uh, so in the Mesolithic age, uh, right, there is a starting of the animal domestication and uh, development of fine tools such as chip stones and carb bones. Uh, along with these, uh, there's advancement in the paintings uh, made by Mesolithic people. The main uh, features obviously are hunting scenes, men hunting in groups in, with blades, spears, sometimes straps. Men are shown with elaborate headgear, dresses, sometimes with paintings. Then many animals were also painted like elephants, bison, tears. Then uh, animals were painted in naturalistic style. Women were shown grinding and preparing food. Some pictures were also shown of depicting family life. So there were themes of social life, childbirth, child rearing, burial. There were sex scenes even, actually. Uh, these paintings uh, show that aesthetic sense uh, was developed in Mesolithic life. And, uh, you know, they have more aesthetic sense, uh, right? When they were very naturalistic at the end of the day. And if you think about that, um, you know, a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, have a very close connection to wind nature so in that sense it is very close to aesthetic but obviously if you think about the tools they used obviously those issues were also there right so at the end of the day uh, it was uh, i would say the vision uh, was you know amazing but uh, maybe the quality and obviously across time even right uh, the you know what was made at that time how it looks after maybe 10,000 years is uh, something we should not compare. And with that, I think, in that way, I think you will end this answer, right? Okay. Uh, so thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you do want to try this question, do try it. Send us, uh, you know, an email. We'll do try to check it for you. Uh, thank you so much. Do like and subscribe. Uh, visit our website. Uh, write an email to us. All right. Join our Telegram group as well. Thank you so much.